It's Patio Side Chats with Fernando Martinez from Chaparral Pavers with tips and advice on landscaping and gardening. Here's Fernando Martinez. Well, hello and welcome. Thank you for joining me today. I am glad you could make it. Come on in, sit down, relax, and let's chat a little bit about today's topic, which is all about plants and boulders and the combination of using plants and boulders together. I want to talk about spacing and design and how that all kind of fits together as you're doing your project in regards to plants and boulders and having them work together really well. And finally, I want to talk about fertilizing. When you buy new plants and plant them in the ground, the question always comes up, you know, how do I fertilize? What do I use? How do I do it? You know, when do I do it? All this kind of stuff. So let's jump right into it and get into the show. So when it comes to doing a planting project, and this goes for all planting projects, whether you're starting a brand new one, and if you've taken out, a cleared out an area and you're doing a brand new planting, or if you have a new yard and you've done all the hardscaping and you leave the open planters and you want to tackle that project, or also if you have an existing plant in your yard already and you've taken some out or you just want to kind of redo, refresh, or maybe things were spaced out too far before and you want to fill them in and get a nice full look, you know, this is going to go across the board and this advice will work for all those uh, types of projects. So the main thing that I want to get across to you when you take on these planning projects is spacing. It's very, very important to do the spacing, to get the spacing right for the, because no matter what you do when you do a planning project, it's going to look great right when you finish. How's it going to look in two years? in five years, you know, 10 years down the road. And, you know, really doing it right the first time is what we're all about. And, you know, giving you this little tips and advice so that you can do that and just enjoy it for years to come. And so spacing is huge. Anybody can just go down to the nursery, buy a bunch of plants, you know, get back to the house, throw them kind of randomly out there, dig holes, plant them in the ground. But it's, it's spacing is what makes a, a huge difference. And, getting that right. So decide on a spacing that you want. And it's really a lot of this, what we're talking about here is going to be subjective, but I'm giving you my opinion on kind of where to start and some rules of thumb that I follow so that you can go do your project like a professional. And, um, it's, so let's, let me give you some distances that common, you know, to us. So four feet, I would say would be kind of uh, three to four feet would be a minimum. And again, these are just rules of thumb. Rules are made to be broken and you can have lots of fun, you know, with plantings and and gardening. But to start out, you need to have some semblance of a plan. And so four feet to six feet seems to be about right for, you know, not too sparse and not too full of, um, you know, planning design. So you can kind of take your area. What I do is you can either use it with your mark with your foot out in the ground, like you go outside, you go to the planter bed and I'll just, if it's all dirt, I'll kick my shoe a little bit and I can see a mark right there. Then I'll measure four feet or five feet or six feet, whatever I want the design to be, how full of, of a look I want, or if I want it thinned out and not too full and kind of, you know, open, uh, spacing, you go closer to the six foot. I've gone as far as seven and eight feet spacing, especially if it's a large area, and you know you don't want to spend a ton of money and so you you only got so many plants anything over seven eight feet it's it's going to look way you know really sparse maybe just do a smaller section or something but i've also gone as close as two feet on some plants and and again it depends on the style that you want how full you want and then we'll talk about later about how big the plants get of course but figure that four to six foot rule you're out there and imagine yourself out in the planter. You mark a little space with your foot. You take your tape measure. And I always use a tape measure when I start out, um, you know, spacing for plants. And it seems, it sounds kind of mechanical, but it ends up looking really good. And you're going to kind of fine tune it and move them around after you're finished spacing them out. But you've got to start somewhere and you, and it's, it can be difficult task and it can be kind of overwhelming, especially if you have large planters and a lot of plants. 
like, you know, where do I start? And that's why I wanted to bring this up and talk about this today because I did that this week. I had quite a few plants, quite a large area uh, with a dry creek in the middle that we were building. And I had, it was, you know, it's my job to space all these plants out. So it's fresh in my mind and I'm thinking about it. And so if you, what I like to do is do that first. So kind of mark those areas out, use your tape measure, start with four and then look at all your marks and then see, does that look too full? Is everything a little tight? You don't like the way it looks. You can just erase those marks, do it again, go five feet, go six feet, mix it up. You can have some areas can be four feet spacing and the other areas can be six foot spacings. And so following that kind of rule of thumb, getting an idea and using those marks, you can also use marking paint. Um, that makes it kind of nice too. I just do a little orange paint. I do little dots and I'll go around and I'll do my four to six foot spacing depending on what I want. And then I'll mark the dots and I'll stand back and I'll look at it. Another thing is, um, while I'm thinking about it, no straight lines. I don't like the way straight lines look unless you're purposely putting in a hedge or some formal garden, which is pretty rare, at least for us. Um, you want to kind of you want angles, you know, you can triangulate, you can make triangles or you can make, you know, strange shapes, but you want to kind of keep, depending on where the borders are, hopefully you have some curves or something, or you can, you know, if you're in charge of that, put some curves in, make the planners, you know, that's why I like six, seven, eight foot planners because you can have, you can triangulate plants. If you have a three foot planner, it's going to be really hard to just, I mean, basically you're just going to put all the plants in a straight line and just dot them down there. You can still use the four to six foot spacing, but you can't really have a natural look. So I like big planters. If you, if you have the option and you haven't made the planters yet, or, you know, if you're thinking about putting in grass, leave the planters big and you'll be have way less maintenance. It'll look much more natural and it'll retain a big feel. Even in small yards, I would rather see a big patio and big planters and have everything look big and small patio, small lawn, small planters, and everything looks tight and, you know, straight lines. So anyway, once you get all your little orange dots or your little marks with your foot and you're happy with the spacing, it looks good. Again, you haven't thought about what plants yet. You haven't been to the nursery yet. Kind of just seeing what you need and what spacing that you like. This is really the first thing that you do. And when you're happy with that, then you count the dots. And that is how many plants you need. Now, you hear, you've heard me talk about the Sunset Western Garden book a lot. That's a great resource to look up and, and you can bring it to the nursery with you. Or if you don't want to do that, when you go to the nursery, just, you know, tell the nursery help there that you want, this is what my spacing is, four feet, five feet, six feet, or combination or whatever it is. And they can steer you towards the plants that stay to that size because you don't want to get plants get eight, 10 feet wide with a four to four to six foot spacing. So, and you know, most of the plants, a lot of them that are in the nurseries these days are all dwarf and compact. If there's anything that says compacta or dwarf, um, in the name of the plant that gives you a clue, a lot of them will just say it right on there. And, um, so that kind of makes it easy. And most things are tagged. And just pull the tag out of the pot and see what the spacing is. Just read that and check the sun shade requirements and, you know, stay flexible with the design. So make your markings, get your plant count. What I'll do is I'll take a couple pictures with my phone of the area and I'll take that to the nursery with me. And that way I've got the pictures of kind of an idea of what's behind there, you know, do a, a nice wide angle shot so you can see the house or you can see anything that would affect the design, whether you, where you want things tall or low, if you're trying to see a view of an area or or something you don't want to block, you know, so you get an idea of height and you have the plant quantities and you know what the, what the spacing is. So doing that, you're going to be way ahead of the game by the time you go to the nursery. I think a, a mistake would be, I mean, there's really, I mean, it's all very forgiving and subjective, like we're saying, but I think the, you'll have the least, you know, amount of success if you just go to the nursery first with no idea what the spacing is 
or how it's going to be laid out or pictures of the area. You haven't really, you know, given it much thought. You're going to have a, a lot more fun at the nursery and, and a better understanding of how to design, you know, that area. So now when it comes to design and purchasing the plants, how do you know what plants to get and how many of what varieties and all this? So what I do is I stay with odd numbers. Odd numbers always look good. And there's, there's some occasions where even numbers make sense, but for the most part, again, these are just rules of thumb. Rules are made to be broken and have fun at the end of the day. That's, it's definitely have a good time and enjoy the process. So when you see a plant that you like, grab three of them. If you really like that plant a lot, grab five or grab seven and keep track, you know, write it down and say, okay, well, you know, we need 35 total plants. I got, you know, five of these, seven of those, three of these. And, you know, maybe I had some, I had five plants that were spaced at six feet. You know, I need five larger plants and you see something you like. And, and odd, like I said, even numbers make sense when you can do a groupings. So if I, if I wanted a group of five plants, which is an odd number, I could get two of one plant and three of another plant and put them together. So what I like to think about is what plants complement each other? What colors do I like? What colors go with, you know, the theme of what I've got going at the house there? Does it make sense? So, or you could also think of it in terms of style. Are we looking for Mediterranean? And I'm trying to get more of a tropical look. Do I like this, you know, native garden drought tolerant style or, you know, what, whatever it is, uh, you want to either complement what you have going on or stay with some sort of theme so that when you're picking out the plants, you have an idea and mix up the, the colors, not only of the flowers, but the colors of the leaves, the size of the leaves should vary. So if you have a lot of plants with little tiny leaves, get some plants with some bigger leaves. You know, if there's some plants have big green glossy leaves, other ones have small, narrow, thin, you know, powdery blue grayish leaves. So when you do the groupings, like I was talking about two plants of one variety, three plants of another, it's nice to, it's kind of fun to go with all, you know, like five gray bluish plants. Maybe you could do three Mexican sage with two lavenders. They, they'll have a similar color, a little bit different uh, leaf and a little bit different flower, but they go together. You know, if you wanted to do like a variegated, a grouping of variegated leaves, you know, and it could be different varieties of plants, but all variegated. And, and you get this theme going. And, it, and then as you put those plants out in your garden, it's going to look really designed. So when you have the quantities and you, you, you know which, how much for what areas, you buy them, you do the groupings, and I'll take pictures of the groupings at the nursery too. If I'm laying them out, I like to pull and pick the nicest plant, you know, and set it out. And I'll take pictures of the groupings so I don't forget when I get back to the job site. So those are some great ideas on spacings and groupings and staying with odd numbers and getting that. Now, also what I like to do is leave a little bit of room for boulders. Boulders and plants look absolutely wonderful together. And so, and you don't have to use all the same boulder either. You can use multiple different types of boulders and groupings of boulders. Again, stay with odd numbers and get a quantity before you go boulder shopping. <laughs> it sounds kind of funny, but I love boulder shopping and looking for rocks and stay open. You know, you don't, you never know what kind of boulders are going to be down there. You never know what kind of plants are going to be at the nursery. So I don't get too caught up and I have to have, you know, five of these, or if you look too much online and you're looking at all the botanical names and you're going down the list and this sub variety with, with this color and this, you know, variegation or whatever leaf. And then you go down the nursery nursery and you've got this list of plants and, and it's very rigid and I want all these plants and then we're going to special order them and get them in. I don't know. To me, the plants will tell you, you know, it just, it's a timing thing. And, and it's, a, there's a flow to it. So when you get down to the nursery and it's what looks great right then, what's really big in the can and looks like a good deal. 
and you like that, you like that color, it might be a plant you didn't even think of. And boulders are the same way. You go down there and it's like, what boulders do they have today? Which part of the mountain was that boulder coming out of? I, I didn't used to like those boulders, but these have some rust colors and, and some whites and tans. And then these other ones are, I saw some green boulders in San Luis that had purple veins. And I'm like, oh my goodness, you know? You, so if I just said, oh, I got to have Santa Barbara sandstone and this is what we do. And I got to need three of these. And I go down there out. It's just, you know, staying open and fluid with a design is going to really help a lot. And you're going to have a great time. And believe me, it's going to turn out beautiful. You don't have to worry and, you know, be so rigid about it. So stay open, let it be free form, go in there, see what looks good. And definitely, I don't see how you're going to do, if you do all plantings, it's just too soft. There's too many, there's nothing, you know, doesn't give any stateliness to it or a stature. The, the boulders just add a lot. And, um, you know, pick out certain types of plants that look good with boulders. I love putting grasses next to boulders. Anything spiky that looks like it could be, you know, growing out of the side of a boulder or something. And just, you know, we do, I was talking about where I did that um, job, that planting job where the dry creek in the middle. And there, what's created two sides. And so what was kind of cool is that we found these, talk about staying open, there was two variegated uh, bogan vias that were called like California gold or something. And they only had two, but I loved them. I had never seen that variety before. It was a variegated leaf and it was an orangey yellow gold color of a bogan via, which I just don't see very often. I wish I wanted three because I'm following my own rules here. I want uh, odd numbers. But I thought, you know what? There's only two. We'll take them. I'll find a spot from. I get over there and. The, I realized I wasn't really thinking in those terms of there's two sides, one side on each side of the dry Creek. And we had made these mounds coming up to give it some, you know, contour. And I thought, Oh my gosh, I'm going to put one Bogan via on each mound on either side of the dry Creek. And it was perfect. Now on the Bogan vias, I left nine foot spacing on those. Cause I know how big they get. That was an exception. So you know, even that, when I got back, yeah, I had everything spaced out at six, seven feet or whatever. In that case, you know, I'm going to do the bogeys at nine feet. And it allowed me to, to tighten up some of the other plants to get closer to a five foot spacing on some of them. And, it, and I, I thought it looked better. So, you know, balancing two, putting some things. I, I had uh, like five princess flower and I had grouped them with three and two other plants and two and three other plants on the other side. And so I had princess flower on both sides tying it in. So you can tie things in, throw them around. The boulders, of course, were on both sides. And I did a grouping of three boulders. Then one is an odd number two. So you can do one boulder by itself. That looks good. Of course, we had a bunch of boulders around the dry creek. And I had these variegated grasses, three of them, odd numbers, going to either side of the dry creek, kind of triangulating, coming out of the boulders. So that's... I mean, that's how I do it. I think it looks good and hopefully, you know, that helps you. I want you to do you, do it your way and do what makes sense to you. But also I want you to have a good experience and have the right amount of plants, not too many. And you're trying to stuff them all in there or you show up. That's not enough. Or, or you just have this, like, I like this one. I like though you buy one of everything. And then the, it just looks kind of hodgepodge, you know? And so hopefully this helps in, thinking ahead and designing and how this is all going to turn out. So uh, I do want to talk about fertilizer when we get back on the other side of the break. Remember, you can always uh, listen to any of these radio shows. And if you want to hear, if you missed any part of this one and you want to hear it on YouTube, just type in Chaparral Pavers on YouTube. Or, of course, we've got them all listed out on our website at ilovetocomehome.com. We'll see you on the other side of the break. You're listening to Patio Side Chat with Fernando Martinez from Chaparral Pavers on California's Central Coast. Here on 1240 AM and 99.5 FM, KSMA. Chaparral Pavers. I love to come home.com. Imagine the flickering flames and warmth of a fire pit. Soothing sounds of trickling water. Decorative lighting. Highlighting your landscape at dusk. 
driveways and patios not only functional but a work of art this is what chaparral pavers does for your landscape lifestyle you'll love to come home chaparral pavers visit us now at i love to come home.com if you're thinking about installing a new paver patio or paver driveway check out chaparral pavers online at i love to come home.com Serving the Central Coast since 2001, Chaparral Pavers will work with you to get it right and complete the job to your specifications as customer service is king at Chaparral Pavers. Paver driveways are stylish and durable and guaranteed to never crack. If your old concrete driveway or entryway is a hazardous cracking mess, it's time to call Chaparral Pavers. Go to their website, ilovetocomehome.com. You'll find all the information you need Check out photographs of past installations and reviews from Central Coast residents who have used Chaparral pavers. And don't forget, all installations are guaranteed for the life of your home. So check out Chaparral pavers online at ilovetocomehome.com. Chaparral pavers, they'll make you love to come home. Now, back to Patio Side Chats with Fernando Martinez from Chaparral pavers on KSMA. And we're back. Okay, we are talking about plants and design and boulders and spacings and being prepared before you go to the nursery. And, you know, thinking about odd numbers in design, the heights and how things are going to look. And when you go with these, the shorter spacings, really make sure that the plants that you're buying are dwarf. You can use that wonderful resource that we have, the Sunset Western Garden Book. Um, bring it with you to the nursery and see what's available. Stay flexible and fluid with the design and look them up. Or you or you know what? The phone is, is amazing. Because you know what's interesting to me about nursery help, and it just seems, it never ceases to amaze me. I go in there and I'll ask them, how big does this plant get? Oh, three feet. How wide does it get? Three feet. Everything's three feet, like really? And I'll look it up on my phone and it'll be four to six feet wide, one to two feet high, you know, for example, or, you know, it's usually not three feet by three feet. So if you get somebody that's helping you and everything's three feet, it's just a standard answer. You can stop listening to them and start looking things up for yourself. So now some plants get huge, 10, 12, 15 feet wide, you know, over time, or they, or they look like small little shrubs and they actually end up becoming almost tree like. So, you know, you do want to make sure that they're dwarf or compact, anything, you know, even, even a six foot shrub, if you know, can be a dwarf or compact plant, it just takes three to five years to get there. And that's gold. That is how you get low maintenance for a long period of time. Every single estimate I go on, it gets drilled in my head day after day. Low maintenance, low maintenance, low maintenance. If I go on an estimate and they didn't say, I want low maintenance, <laughs> I'd probably pass out. What, you know, or somebody wants a high maintenance garden. Never. I mean, I, I wouldn't want that. So how do you do that? Dwarf compact plants spaced correctly. Leave room for boulders. And when you put the boulders in, they don't require any trimming, <laughs> no maintenance. They don't require any water. They look good year round and they take up space and they give you a different look in there. Now you can put bark around them. What I like to do is little outcroppings of cobblestone around the boulders and then bark on the outside of that. Just vary it up, have fun, mix materials, mix different types of boulders all the different types of plants, get green leaves in there, big leaves, small leaves, silver leaves, you know, really think about the foliage and how the foliage looks, not just the color of the flowers. And of course, yes, all the different colors, use your favorite colors, use bright colors if that's what you like. Go with pastels if you like a softer look, um, you know, and try to stay with a theme, whether it be you know, the common themes that we have in this area are Mediterranean, of course, the native style. You can do a cottage garden, which is kind of a collage of styles, which I really like because you can mix in roses, you can mix in edibles, you can have, you know, fruit trees, you can have um, drought tolerant natives. 
some tropicals and all kind of mixed in there. And and it's a nice style. Some of them I just call California gardening because we can grow a lot here in California. and, And we do have a tendency to mix native with Mediterranean and tropical. But of course you can go heavy on, on any of those and certain plants that are heavily themed will change the style by themselves. If you add palms, for instance, the second you add palms, it'll, it, the whole feel of the design changes. And so there's certain plants, be aware of that, you know, cactus or succulents, you know, you you change the theme dramatically. So pick one theme or a collage of themes and understand what it is that you're doing and, and why you're doing it. Fragrance is another thing to think about. I absolutely love adding fragrance to a garden. So it's not just color the flowers, the leaves, the textures, you know, the fragrance, all that stuff, the size of the flowers, there's so many things and it's so fun. So I just want you to enjoy it and have fun and I want you to have success at your first try. And, um, or even if you've done it a hundred times and you hadn't thought about, you know, something that we're talking about here, it'll make it a little easier for you. Now I did say we're going to talk about fertilizer. So that's exactly what we're going to do. When you buy new plants from the nursery, they already have fertilizer in the can, in the soil that's in there. So you really don't need to fertilize for the first couple months. You absolutely have to fertilize. So definitely fertilize every few months, depending on how you do it. Again, I stay out of telling you exactly what to do, but get in the group of people who fertilize and do it regularly. Could be water soluble fertilizer with a hose end sprayer. That's great. Needs to be done a little more often, maybe once a month. If you do the granular pellets out of the bag, you can, that'll probably last three to four months, not as quick acting. So there's some give and take on depending how you do it. You can, the one thing that actually fertilizer you could do when you're planting is plant tabs. It's compressed fertilizer into a tablet and you can stick them in the soil and they'll break down over time. So anyway, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you for tuning in. We look forward to seeing you next week. You can always catch us on YouTube at Chaparral Pavers or I love to come home.com is our website. And we've got a lot of the radio shows listed there. So if you want to suggest a topic, feel free. If you want to give us a call, give us a call. We'll get the number there. Anyway, thanks for listening and we will see you next week. This has been Patio Side Chats with Fernando Martinez from Chaparral Pavers. Go to ilovetocomehome.com to find out more or call 805-588-6917. And be sure and tune in next week at this same time for Patio Side Chats here on KSMA.